Welcome to the first ever Maddox News. Not sure what exactly I'm going to title this thing, but we're calling it Maddox News for now. I wanted to do a news program for a while now because I think the news mostly sucks. Uh, I want to stay away from a lot of political topics. I think a lot of people are already doing a lot of political topics, and it's kind of boring and hack at this point. So I'm doing a different kind of news program, a classier news program, a program hosted by yours truly. Over on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the stories we're going to cover today. We're going to start out with idiots who are eating the Tide Pods, talk about uh, Gator versus Python, the Gerther movement, an asteroid <laughs> that's going to come and strike Earth, I guess, uh, fake news awards, a sneezy idiot, and then a segment I like to do on this program called Shut Up, uh, where I'll talk about somebody in the news who needs to shut their pie holes. And I'll also be reading your viewer comments. Um, so if you guys have any super chats, if you guys post something in the chat rooms, let me know. I'll take a look at those at the tail end of the show. But, um, oh, and I should and mention one other thing. Down at the bottom of the screen, I have a Bitcoin tracker. So I, I notice a lot of news programs don't cover cryptocurrency. Uh, they don't really cover new media stories. This news program is going to be... Stories that are in the news, in the headlines, but also stories that interest people in new media, uh, myself included. If you guys think that's a douchey phrase, that's because it is. Anyway, we should move on to the first story. There is a meme I'm sure you're aware of. Everyone is. Uh, here it is. People are eating these things, and they think that they can do it just as a joke. They can put it in their mouths temporarily and take it out, and they'll be fine. But the coating for the Tide Pods themselves will hurt you. It will put holes in your throat. It'll fuck you up. And it's irreversible. Don't, don't even do it as a joke. Uh, there's a very funny Onion article that came out today that said that Tide is finally releasing sour apple Tide Pods for a new flavor. Um, anyway, we should move on to the next story. Uh, this, is, this is a gator versus a python. This happened on a Florida golf course. Look at this. So this is a real thing that happened. By far the most interesting thing that's ever happened on a golf course, I believe. Uh, an alligator had a fight with a python. My money's on the gator. And <laughs> not just mine, but the wildlife officials, this is according to yahoo.com, the wildlife officials were rooting for the alligator as well. Uh, it says here, according to Yahoo, we are encouraged by the prospect of a native Florida alligator consuming an invasive Burmese python, said Brian Norris. Spokesman for the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. So, I also want to talk about, uh, before we move on, the Bitcoin bubble. Now, at the start of the new year, Bitcoin was around 17000 If you guys check out the website that's, uh, that's linked down below, it's not linked, I mean just on the screen, uh, you can see what the Bitcoin price is. I encourage you to look at the seven-day forecast because it started out, I think, at uh, 14000 seven days ago, one week ago. And now it's already down to 11,000, 6,000. I believe the uh, the subreddit for Bitcoin um, started posting suicide prevention phone numbers. Uh, pretty serious stuff. But uh, let's move on to the next story here. This is a story. So Twitter started mocking the, quote, Gerther movement. Uh, the Gerther movement is... Um, Basically, Donald Trump got his health certificate, and uh, he got his health te his health checked. Um, he weighed, <laughs> according to the White House, 239 pounds. Nobody believes that. Uh, so people on Twitter started posting pictures of other people who actually weigh 239 pounds, including Tom Brady, who is uh, 6'4 and 225 pounds, uh, for comparison. Only about, uh, what, like 15 pounds off, 15 pounds shy. Donald Trump doesn't look anything like Tom Brady. Uh, Twitter compared his uh, his picture to uh, just a number of people who have who weigh about 239 pounds. There's no fucking way. Um, and he's also passed his mental health tests, apparently. Uh, let's move on to the next story. This is uh, oh, this is a story that I have been that strikes near and dear to my heart. It's about asteroids. I've been raising the alarm bells on asteroids for years. Because 
it could wipe out the entire planet. And nobody's really doing shit about it. And people are like, oh, maybe we can notice these asteroids and detect them and shoot them down. Guys, we're not spending the money to stop asteroids. It's just not happening. Uh, here's one that's coming by. Check out this news story. Look at this. So this asteroid that's coming by, these are Apollo asteroids that come into the Earth's um, the Earth's rotation. So there's a chance, it's pretty remote, but there's a chance that one of these asteroids could hit Earth. Uh, once every 100,000 years or so, there is a cataclysmic asteroid that hits Earth, and that's what wiped out the dinosaurs. It's been about six or 700, I think we're six or seven times overdue for an asteroid like that. Um, and there's all sorts of videos now, dash cam footage from people in Russia, people in Arizona, people who are just driving around, and they see asteroids falling through the sky. It's not nearly as uncommon as you might think. The bigger ones are more uncommon, thankfully, but uh, even, a, even an asteroid the size of a bus could devastate a small city. Well, one can only hope. Uh, here's another story. Let's move on to the Fake News Awards. So Donald Trump had his official fake news awards, and a lot of people lost their fucking minds about it. Um, this is this is the uh, the story. This is when when Donald Trump basically wanted to blast Washington Post, New York Times, and uh, there's one other. Oh, CNN, of course, CNN, the uh, the number one fake news, according to Donald Trump. Um, the awards basically are an attack on the media, and I think a lot of uh, senators and congressmen saw it saw it as just that rightly so the uh the fake news awards so the thing that drives everyone crazy about this and by the way if this is the first time you're tuning in you don't know anything about me my political opinions uh my my political point of view i am unaffiliated with any party i think that uh, both sides of the political spectrum can lead to censorship and and cause problems uh so i am not a fan of trump wasn't a fan of hillary uh so if i cover any news stories that are critical of Trump, it's, I promise you, it's not because it's part of a conspiracy. Uh, you know, you can call me, uh, whatever stupid bullshit names you want. Uh, I'll be reading those comments shortly. I'm sure, I'm sure there are a lot of words that rhyme with duck in the comment section right now. But anyway, um, the whole concept of fake news came about because journalists were competing with bullshit websites like Infowars and oilempire.us. Uh, <laughs> if your domain doesn't end in a .com or a .net and you're getting news from it, you should probably check your news source. You might want to look into something else. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a stupid story. We should talk about this uh, the sneezing idiot. Uh, check this out. So a guy ruptured his throat by trying to block a sneeze. I didn't think that was possible, but uh, accordingly, according to, uh, oh, this is Huffington Post, a doctor says you, sh you should actually sneeze and not try to hold it in, which uh, people fucking do, and it sounds like a fart in their throat. Uh, this guy pinched his nose and closed his mouth, and it ruptured his throat. Uh, really fucking stupid. This guy's weak. I think that's nature trying to tell you something. Um, it's also like those stories. Every now and then, there will be a story about somebody eating one of those uh, ridiculously hot peppers, like a ghost pepper or something like that, and it will burn a hole in your esophagus. Um, I think that's just nature telling you that you suck. You shouldn't... Uh... <laughs> you're, not meant to, you're not meant to survive if you can't eat a pepper, you dumb fuck. Um, let's move on to... Oh, this is... Uh, so this is my favorite segment now. Uh, my favorite for the very first broadcast. It's Shut Up. It's somebody in the news media... Who needs to shut their pie holes? And this is a story from, I believe, England. Uh, check this out. So this girl uh, tried to get... She considers herself a social influencer. And she tried to get some free accommodations at, uh, I believe, the White Moose Cafe. Which is infamous for turning down vegetarians and vegans. I believe a long time ago, uh, they got put on the map because a vegan went to the restaurant and complained that there weren't enough vegan options. 
So the owner of the White Moose Cafe wrote a very pointed response, basically telling her to fuck off and eat someplace else. And so this girl, I guess, didn't know their reputation, and she reached out to them as a social influencer. And I looked at her social media account, I think on Facebook uh, or in- Instagram, she has something like 80,000 followers, and Facebook, like, you know, 10,000, something like that. And she wanted to get comped for her hotel room. And for those who aren't familiar, this is something that's happening more and more with people who consider themselves, quote, social influencers. Uh, They expect free perks, free hotel rooms, free food. In exchange, what they'll do is they'll write a review about your establishment on their social media account. You know, because they don't want to spend their own money at your establishment. What they're going to do is tell other people to spend their money at their establishment. That's how influential they are. They can just show up at your place, eat your food. So the owner of the White Moose Cafe wrote back to this girl and said, yeah, well, uh, you know, we can't play, we can't pay our wait staff with influence. We can't pay our servers. We can't buy food. I mean, we'd be happy to tell them that they're going to be part of your review, but they still need to pay their bills. And this chick wrote, she made it like a a 20 minute video crying on social media about how she's never been treated so poorly. Um, If this is the worst you've ever been treated, you're living a pretty charmed life. Thumbs up to White Moose Cafe. I like those guys. I actually started following White Moose Cafe on Snapchat. Pretty funny stuff. Uh, the guy, the guy's always blasting delicate millennials. Um, we should get to some comments, though. I have some comments. Let's see if this works. The mic might cut out just while I'm in the comments, but I'll come back and I'll read those comments. Okay, this is Lotso says, yummy poison about the Tide story. Um, And then we have Matthew Holloway says, please explain her pink eye. I didn't. Well, Matthew, the reason she has a pink eye, and I I actually thought that was kind of weird and funny at first, but then I looked into it, and she has just recently had um, lazy eye surgery, I guess. She had a lazy eye, and she had surgery, so I, uh, you know, I guess that one you get a free pass for. I, I just thought maybe she, uh, you know, a lot of people just thought maybe she had pink eye. Uh, she wasn't sleeping. She itched her eye with some poop. Um, let's see. We got another comment here. Neo says Trump supporters are stable geniuses. Of course, that's a reference to Trump's statement about how stable he is, <laughs> how, uh, how much of a genius he is. Uh, we also got a $20 super chat from Punching Gandhi. Punching Gandhi, thank you so much. Very cool. Um, Keep those comments coming. We're going to probably wrap this up pretty soon. Now, this is something that I'm kind of experimenting with. Obviously, it's a little rough around the edges. I'm still figuring this format out, figuring out these, uh, these news stories. But I think this is something I'm going to try to do every Friday. Every Friday around 6 p.m. Pacific. That'd be 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys chime in on the comments below, let me know what you like and don't like about the format. I'll get the audio problems fixed. I know what the problem is. Uh, we'll continue. I, at one po- at some point in the future, I think what I'm going to do is have a Bitcoin expert on the show as well. So we can actually talk about uh, Bitcoin and uh, you know do, do an actual analysis of the, of the market and see what... Uh, I mean, there's just so many coins on the market right now. Um, a lot of people are, are going through those. Um, a lot of people are investing. You know, people don't know what to invest in. They don't know how much to invest. They don't know when they should get in or when they should get out. The biggest problem right now with Bitcoin is that it's still too new. So people who are investing don't understand that there is or could be a bubble. Um, if you're in a bubble that's never popped, you're in the riskiest situation because you don't know when it's going to happen, then there is no precedent for it. You don't know what it looks like. I mean, many people said Bitcoin's bubble popped when it went down from 17 to 10 in less than a week, and now it's back up to 11 or 12. If you see the ticker below, it's at 11.6, and this is in real time. These are real-time numbers right now. Um, So I'm going to maybe, let's see, if there's any more comments, uh, I'm going to read. If not, I think we're going to close this one out. Uh, 
thanks for tuning in. I'm going, well, let's see. Okay, we got, uh, well, we got one more comment. Here's one from Ben. He says, invest in Tide Pods. Screw Yeah, thank you, Ben. Uh, I can't wait for this Tide Pod meme to be done. Um, it's not quite as worn out as Harambe, but uh, it's getting there. It's getting pretty close. Uh, you know, not that I'm not guilty of uh, perpetuating it myself. Uh, but anyway, guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you like or don't like about the format. Again, this is still a little rough around the edges, but we'll figure it out. Uh, there's a lot more to come. Thank you for tuning in. Let me make sure. Let me make sure this uh, this tail end audio works. But uh, I also want to give a big shout out to Stan Morris. Stan Morris from NEA uh, from Arkansas. Thank you so much for helping produce this show. There will be more, and we will get these uh, kinks worked out. But uh, this is a good proof of concept, I think, to see if you guys like this sort of thing. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Lots more to come.